Elementor Website Builder is a fantastic tool, but it has a lot of things that can create confusion and ultimately unfinished projects. I don't want that to happen to you, so I've compiled my quick Elementor tutorial. There's a lot to unpack, like the fact that Elementor offers its own hosting now. So let's take a closer look. It should be interesting. A common misconception is that to get to this builder, you have to buy Elementor WordPress hosting. That's not the case. You can use the WordPress Elementor plugin and choose a different hosting provider that best suits your needs. My recommendations for that would be Hostinger or DreamHost. They, in general, offer more value for your money. I've also left special discounts for all three in the description. If you're hosting somewhere else, you can skip to the website building part. But for everyone else, use the link below and grab a plan. I always recommend starting with the cheapest option and then upgrading once necessary. With my discount, you should see a very alluring price for the light plan. However, this option comes only with the Elementor free version. This means that to fully use this builder, you'd have to get two subscriptions, which is too much of a hassle. So if you can afford it, grab the basic plan. Once you are at checkout, create an account, confirm and pay. Then you'll get an email with instructions. Next, log into Elementor and go through a quick setup. Click create a website, select your subscription, wait for it to end loading, and that is it. You get a black design, but of course there are a few Elementor templates from which you can choose. However, I would suggest grabbing a free plugin starter templates and choosing one of those. They offer a much larger selection. And these designs are fully compatible with Elementor since they were built using it. Okay, so pick any without overthinking and let's look at how to use Elementor. From the dashboard, we can either go to WordPress admin or jump directly to the Elementor editor. Click here to go to Elementor edit. You should see this window in front of you. I'm gonna be using Elementor Pro, but the navigation will be similar to the free version as well. On the left, you'll see the main menu displaying the selection of elements. This is where most of your work will take place. And talking about elements, yeah, there's a lot of them, from images to pricing tables, from SoundCloud player to progress bars. It can get hectic, but there is a search feature at the top and everything is neatly categorized. So it shouldn't take a long time to learn what's where. On the right, you should see your navigator window, which shows your website or more precisely, this page's structure. This allows for way quicker navigation and sometimes elements are below other ones. So clicking them with the mouse isn't viable. Select one section, it should have a column. Inside, there should be at least one element. Click to select it. As you noticed, the left sidebar has been changed to specific options. Let's see what you can do, for example, with a text element. First, you get the basic text editing controls. Make it bold, add links, insert images, etc. Below, you'll find a few settings for columns and drop caps. Scrolling up, you'll see that this is only one of three tabs that this text element has. Let's go to Style, where we can change text color alignment or font settings. If you want to change the color, you can click here and get to set it manually. Or you can click on the globe to select a global color. What does that mean? You can fully customize these global settings but they are colors that are already used in your theme. I can go with primary text colors, accents, or highlights. Choosing these will ensure you're not introducing new colors to your Elementor website design. A good web design principle is to have only a few main colors, so don't change the shades of every page. You can also do that with fonts. The global system makes editing a harmonious design actually easy. Right, we have one more tab left. It's advanced. If you're not building something specific, you might want to avoid this at the start. Or that's what I would say if Elementor didn't have a way to control Z your way back to the start of editing. And even if for some reason it doesn't work, just save progress. Try things out and reload without saving. And voila, like save scumming in video games. So with that out of the way, what can you do in advanced? Structure and overall design changes, like setting margins or padding to move specific elements on top of each other or half off the screen. When working with these kinds of numbers, be aware that you can change your units in the top corner of each field. Here, I can go with percentages, pixels, M, rem, and VH. Those three last ones are a bit more advanced. Read up on what they mean. I usually go with percent or VH since it represents the overall screen height in units. This is the difference between 5% and 5VH. You can also arrange your elements in depth with the Z settings if you want certain parts of your site to be above or below others. You can add motion effects, transform this element entirely, and add custom CSS or attributes. I won't go into them since most of you will only need these tools later on. That's everything basic and advanced, but there are two more things, AI and dynamic tags. 
The former is, you know, everywhere by now. But in all seriousness, Elementor AI allows you to customize the text to your liking and generate images or code. It allows you to set your tone for the entire site, and the AI will try to follow it but it's a separate add-on. Even with the most expensive Elementor hosting plans, you get the basic version of it. Should you get it? I would say not now. There are countless free alternatives, and unless you're making a few sites every month, paying a subscription is pointless. What about dynamic tags? Now, this is really useful. Elementor utilizes the WordPress system, and you can link or pull from other parts of your site. For example, I want this text element to show my website's tagline. I'll scroll down and pick this, and the tagline is displayed. Now, if I want to change that tagline, it will change here automatically. Another example might be taking an image and linking it to your site's URL so the user can go back to your front page. This might sound a bit confusing at the start, but once you get how it operates, it's going to become second nature. Okay, so that was a lot about elements. Now let's see how to work with them on your design. First, you can use drag and drop controls to either place elements or move them. Second, you can just click on any element from the left menu and it will appear on the design like this. If you wanna go back from specific item settings to element selection, click this icon at the very top of the page. Okay, moving on. Every element here is placed in a section, so your site is basically made of stacked containers. A few things to note. There can be elements inside containers and inside sections, all with their own settings. But I would try to be as minimal with this as possible. It can get confusing and hectic quickly. Also, to reach specific settings, hover over any section and you'll see this icon at the top. Click it. You can use the right mouse button to pull up a quick menu and then select Edit Container. Every element has this editing icon when hovered on, but item icons are always on the top side and container icons are in the middle. As for those settings, sections can be boxed or full width, meaning these elements will span the entire screen. You can also mess with minimum height, alignment, and positions. To have full control over these settings, we wanna create a new section by clicking a plus icon anywhere on the design. As you can see, there are 12 options for splitting. If I choose this, I can add four elements in a row or add multiple elements in one placement like this. Elementor is flexible in that way and should allow you to create interesting designs. But there's more, and obviously I can't cover every detail of how to make a website with Elementor, so you'll have to do some exploration by yourself. But that's why you get tools to help you create a website and not someone to build it for you. I do wanna cover a few last things. The pre-made section can be found by adding a new part. Click the folder icon and you will see this selection. You can add blocks like a 404 error page, archives, and contact section. Or you can just go with a full pre-made page if they suit your needs. The selection here is quite extensive, but compared to true market leaders like Wix, it's relatively small. As for search engine optimization, Elementor has a limited system. You can only add alt tags to images and modify page descriptions. That's why I highly recommend the free Yoast SEO plugin. It's not only easy to use, but it integrates perfectly with Elementor, allowing you to customize your SEO fully. And I hope in this age of Googling everything, I don't need to tell you how important SEO is, as important as page loading speed. If you notice falling SEO results, check your performance. If it's not close to Google's recommended 2.5 second mark, your site might be pushed down. That's our last how to build the website step, optimizing performance. There's a lot you can do, but my first recommendation is to optimize your images. There are free and premium plugins that do that automatically. Elementor even offers one with higher tier plans, or you can always use third-party sites before uploading. Other tips would be use fewer animations, really complex elements, and no unnecessary plugins. Basically, load just the things that are absolutely needed. There are also free WordPress optimization plugins you can use to clean up your site from time to time. I have a video talking about just that in the corner if you wanna know more. Oh, as for Elementor Hosting's performance, it's decent. It manages to load a reasonably empty design in about 1.3 seconds, but providers like Hostinger can show better results for similar or cheaper pricing. All right, no need for the long goodbye outro. I hope this Elementor Pro tutorial helped you. If you want more info on how to make a WordPress website or an in-depth Elementor WordPress tutorial, leave a comment letting me know. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you later.